Hey guys, today I want to talk about the uh, computer programming software for this Radiodity QT60 and it also applies to the Anytone uh, 5555N2. So let's get into the, the program that uh, Radiodity supplies for this radio. So right on Radiodity's website you can download the driver that's for the oh, okay it doesn't reach hold on let me just go over you see that adapter it's a USB cable that plugs into the back of the radio if you're like me and uh, refusing to part with Windows 7 well you're gonna need to install that driver and unfortunately you gotta do it manually uh, if you have any problems installing that driver on a Windows 7 machine uh, just send me a message in the comments and uh, I'll try to walk you through it. It's uh, it's not really that difficult, but it does have to be done manually. All right, Windows 10 will probably set it up. I haven't tried it on my Windows 10 machine yet. Uh, I just don't like Windows 10. <laughs> but Windows 10 should bring it up automatically. When you start the program, the, the driver and the program, I'm sorry, are both available from Radiodity's website. When you download the program, this is what it looks like. I open it up, and the first thing that comes up is the channel information. Uh, but we're going to just leave that there for a second, and we're going to go to... I'll show you at setup first. Uh, actually, go to read from radio first. If it can't read from radio... Hold on, let's, let's let this one uh, read from my radio. When it's reading from the radio, the screen changes, and it just says PC. It takes a minute. It can take a minute and it'll finish up. Uh, there's a lot of times uh, connection may be an issue. I had it with the other radio that I was using this cable with, uh, the QT40. I had to go into uh, setup and change the communication port. I'll show you that in just a second. Let it just finish reading from my radio. All right, we have all the information now. You notice that changed because I opened up this radio and uh, made it so that it goes up to all the channels. All right, if you have trouble setting up, if it doesn't read from it at first, because in the program you have read from radio, go to setup, go to communications port. Uh, the default tries to put it on COM1, but COM1 is always used by something else. Uh, I switched this one before I even tried reading from the radio. I automatically switched it to COM3 because I knew it wouldn't work, work on COM1. So once you have that switch, then try again. Go back to program and read from radio. All right, let's go over the the available, the things that are available to do in this radio. All right, you can program your six memory channels right in here, which as you see, I already have mine set for between channel 36 and channel 40, and I also have... Uh, in between channel 39 and 40. Uh, I have a lot of friends that hang out on that frequency. Uh, so I programmed into the, that into uh, memory number 6. Here you can change it. So if I have memory 1 being channel 36, let's say I wanted it on AM. Over here, I could switch it to AM. And then memory channel, when I switch from channel my memory channel 6 which is 400 on lower sideband it would switch to 36 a.m. I'm gonna leave that lower sideband. Uh, you can ha also have it so that it, like, we'll say you're going down to channel 19 and you want to have the Roger beep on. You can choose which one of your Roger beeps just for that one channel. A lot of cool stuff. You can have the echo on just for that one channel and no other channel. Uh, all of these you can it's all customizable per channel all right let's see what else do we have in here let's go to options and features now options and features this is one of the things that I like all right before we get into that let me just go back to the radio for a second it's on saying PCN because it finished reading turn the radio off turn it back on and yeah it's back to normal but see my display? Can you see that? Yes, you can. It says 151 SC. That's me, 151 South Carolina. And in here is where you change that. Just go to the box. 
double click it, put in what you want, double click it, put in what you want. We can turn on the, the beep, the SWR protect, the SWR protect from the factory, it was at 20. Uh, I put it down at 3. Anything over 3 is going to blow up the radio, so <laughs> I don't need it to go all the way to 20 before the radio goes into protection. So I lowered that one to 3. Uh, we can turn on the high cut, which I have it on. I have the noise blanker on. I have the echo on, and if we go over to the other side over here, we can see we can set the echo level. So even though my echo is on, look how low it is. You can't really tell. Listening to me on the air, you can't tell that I have it on. It just gives it a slightly uh, fuller sound. Uh, so I just put it on the lowest setting and run with it. Uh, we have all the other stuff in here. We have the Vox level, so the hands-free setup. The microphone type, uh, dynamic or the electric. I'm on a dynamic at the moment because I have a Kenwood microphone hooked up to this radio. It seems to be doing really well. Uh, my buddy Gary told me about his. He has the Anytone version of this radio. And I was talking to him, and he sounded so good on the air, and he told me he was just on. A stock Kenwood hand mic. He's on the one that has the four buttons on it. Uh, but I think the, the guts of the mic are the same thing. So <laughs> I, I keep forgetting to get radio reports. I keep talking to people, and I keep forgetting to ask them how the mic sounds. I'll get that eventually. So you can switch that right here in the, in the computer program. Oh, what else do we have? Oh, we have the... Uh, the noise reduction uh, transmit here. Where is the receive? Oh, it's right here. I have the uh, receive noise reduction set on number one. I also keep my menu button so that if I press it, it goes right to the noise reduction so I can shut it off right there. I keep showing you that full cup of coffee sitting there. It's just calling my name. <laughs> All right. We also have uh, the mic gain setting, the timeout setting, uh, the talk back, uh, squelch scan, and we can change with the, uh, the what the clarifier does in here. You can also change what the display does. You can have it showing the frequency you're on or the channel. I leave it on frequency. This one here, uh, no, it's not that one. There's, oh, it might actually be in the radios menu. Uh, I had to figure out one of them because the channel, is it actually in here? No. I guess it can only be accessed through the, the radios menu. Right here, the step. That step is where what digit changes when you turn the channel changer or press the up down uh, channel buttons on the microphone the default when i got the radio it was on the zero now even if i pressed that button see it moves it's blinking the five saying it would move oh. <laughs> now it's on the eight get back the, on the zero it moves the zero but now watch, when it stops blinking, it's going to go back and the 8 is going to move. If I press the button, I can move that last one. But when the... Oh, I moved it again. Wait, now it'll move that one. While it's blinking, it will move that one. Once it stops blinking, it's back to changing the, the third digit. Alright, back to the computer software. So what haven't we covered yet? We're in here. I think we pretty much covered this whole page. Oh, there is one more thing that I didn't cover on this page. Uh, the mode button. Let me go back to that radio for a second. The mode button, if you notice, scrolling through mine, you never see PA in there. Because in here... We can shut it off. Let me get that back up so we can see that file name up here. <laughs> it, notice in here that the check 
there's no check mark in the PA enable. I don't use PA, I use the radio as a base station, so I disabled the PA function. I'm probably going to end up eliminating FM also on my radio because I don't use FM. I use uh, these three, AM, upper sideband, and lower sideband, mostly lower. So I may change my mode button so that it only shows those three functions. I think we pretty much covered this whole page. I do recommend having that on. That is a good feature to have. That will protect everything. Your radio, if you have an amplifier, it will protect your amp. Uh, good thing to have, too, because even if your patch cable goes bad between your amp, your radio and your amp, and you get a ton of reflect power going back to the radio, it'll kick out immediately and stop you from blowing anything up. All right, Roger Beep. Oh, this is the one I really wanted to tell you about. This one <laughs> is customizable. You notice we have eight different uh, Roger Beeps to use up here. If you go to the last ones, there's nothing there. You can program in your own. Oh, let's just go 400 on that one. Oh, I need to put a, a length. Ah, uh, what do you think? Let's just go 10. Now go to the next one. And let's go all the way to the top. Uh, again, we'll do 10. We'll go somewhere in the middle on this one and go 10. All right, let's play it. Let me turn up my volume here. Oh, that's right. It won't do it. <laughs> it won't play it until I save it. <laughs> All right, well, I'll have to show you on the radio later. But you can set all these beeps. See, that one's been saved already. It'll play it. Where that's When I have a Roger beep on, that's all I have. It's just a simple little beep. There's also this one. <laughs> but you can change all of these. I mean, this one here will say if you like this one. That red peak. Oh, let's... Let's give it a bump. You can change the tone of how that beep sounds. And you can have it play uh, multiple times, different tones, different frequency. And you can have it repeat itself. So you can put in a Roger beep that has all these beeps and then have it repeat itself ten times. Now, I really shouldn't be telling you guys this because some of you may end up annoying me on the air. On sideband, I can't stand a Roger Beep. It's just, it's not for sideband. It comes across uh, way too strong and loud most of the time. AM, I do like a Roger Beep on AM. And some of these, if you have some friends on the radio like what I have around here, uh, it's a fun toy to play with. Yeah, sometimes you try, you're just having fun and annoying somebody local. It's all in fun. There's no no anger involved. Uh, but the, a beep like this, a radio like this with a customizable Roger beep can be a ton of fun on the air. It's also, too, you know, you get up in the middle of the night, turn on the radio, see if anybody's on. Well, I don't really feel like calling out. Just key up the mic. And if you have a distinct, customized Roger beep, Anybody will know that's you when you key up and beep that Roger beep. So if there's anybody on the air, they'll probably come back to you. All right, last thing is the weather channels. You can remove the weather channels. You can change the frequencies. Oh, no, you can't change them. Uh, you can just add them to scan in here. Uh, add it or delete it from scan. But yet set with those seven. I was thinking. I thought this was like the uh, QT40, uh, the other radio oddity radio I have. I can actually change those frequencies. This radio is just fixed. You can either just shut it off or add it. In in my area, I think six and seven. There's nothing on those, so on mine I could actually remove it if I used the weather band. And I think that pretty much covers. The, the, the basic use of the, the software for this radio. 
it's just it's a fun radio there's just so much you can do with this radio most of the stuff that's listed here is all accessible through the menu on the radio this is just easier it's bigger it's easier to see and use and i i don't know what it is but there's just something oddly satisfying about programming my radio with my desktop computer <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I guess that'll wrap this one up. Hey, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.